Welcome to Science and Futurism. Today, we are going to take a deep dive into the next generation Raptor engine which SpaceX will use to power their Starship and Super Heavy rockets and has been under development for over a decade now. In this video, we will see exactly how a rocket engine works, the different types of rocket engines, look into the specifications of the Raptor engine and discuss what makes the Raptor different from others. So, without any further ado, let's get started. The SpaceX Raptor engine is a liquid fuel rocket engine and like any other rocket engine it works on the principle of Newton's third law of motion. A liquid fuel rocket consists of a combustion chamber that burns a mixture of liquid fuel and oxidizer. The hot exhaust gas is passed through a converging diverging nozzle which expands the gas which in turn provides the thrust required for the rocket to move forward. Raptor is a closed cycle full flow stage combustion engine. What this actually means is that all of the propellant of the rocket is moved through multiple combustion chambers and it is thus combusted in stages. However, some simpler and more common engine designs include open cycle engines, oxidizer rich stage combustion and fuel rich stage combustion. In all of this cycle, some of the fuel and oxidizer is combusted in the pre-burner which rotates the turbine, shaft and the turbo pump. In open cycle combustion, initially some of the propellant is combusted in the pre-burner to rotate the pumps which pump the fuel and oxidizer into the main combustion chamber. However, the fuel that is used to spin the turbines is exhausted out of the rocket and doesn't produce any meaningful thrust, which is essentially fuel wasted just to push the partially combusted propellant into the main combustion chamber. One such example of open cycle engine is the current SpaceX workhorse Merlin engine. As you can see, the exhaust from the pre-burner is just allowed to drift away without producing any meaningful thrust. One more thing that you may have noticed is that the exhaust is very sooty and very dark. This is because the pre-burner combustion is fuel rich, which means the complete combustion doesn't take place and a lot of coke or unburnt carbon is formed which makes the exhaust look very dark. So in order to prevent the wastage in the open cycle, the closed cycle combustion design was invented. The plan is to redirect the pre-burner exhaust into the main combustion chamber where we can convert it into meaningful thrust. However, as we just saw, when pre-burners are run fuel rich, a lot of coke is formed which when redirected into the combustion chamber can block any fuel valves. So to tackle this, the Russians created the first closed cycle engine with their RD-180 which is designed to be oxidizer rich. However, the problem here is that when this hot corrosive oxygen rich exhaust moves towards the main combustion chamber, it would melt or corrode any of the metals and alloys known at that time. So the Russians had to develop a new alloy which could sustain such extreme environments. On the other hand, Americans initially deemed the closed cycle engines as impossible but eventually figured out a solution by using two separate fuel rich pre-burners and produced the RS-25 which powered the space shuttle flights. The coking problem is caused due to the unburnt carbon, so in order to get rid of this, scientists and engineers in America just eliminated the use of carbon-based fuel by using liquid hydrogen as fuel and liquid oxygen as oxidizer. However, due to its small size, hydrogen can leak into any minute gaps. As a result, seals pressurized with inert helium were used to prevent leaking. Now, one question that may have surely arrived in your mind is that what makes the Raptor better than this earlier developed closed cycle engines. Firstly, the Raptor consists of two different pre-burners and each of these pre-burners are powered by the rich stream of what they are pumping. That is, the fuel pre-burner is fuel rich and the oxidizer pre-burner is oxygen rich. This means that we don't need any excessive parts like seals to prevent the fuel rich stream from entering into the oxygen rich counterpart or vice versa. As the pre-burners are rich in what they are pumping, they can function at lower temperature which prevents the wear and tear of the turbo pump as they don't have to sustain any extreme environment. Before entering the pre-burners, the fuel is circulated around the nozzle. This is called as regenerative cooling. As the temperature in the combustion chamber can reach up to 3500 Kelvin, cooling becomes a very important part. And as the propellant used are cryogenic, they can be used as coolants to ensure the engine doesn't melt down. After passing through the pre-burners, the partially combusted propellant is then fed into the main combustion chamber where they are ignited by using a spark plug. Further, as the fuel that enters into the combustion chamber has to pass through the pre-burners first, the mass flow rate of the combustion chamber is very high which helps in the efficiency of the rocket engine. 
Now, after understanding how the Raptor functions, let's look at the reasons for its design and also at its specifications. As it makes complete sense to think that when designing a rocket engine, we choose it to be either the most powerful or the most efficient, isn't it? But the Raptor is neither the most powerful nor the most efficient engine ever developed. What we need to understand is that when designing a rocket engine, a lot of factors come into play. So, as many of us know, the main goal of the SpaceX Starship is to be highly reusable and ultimately help set up a colony on Mars. As a result, the Raptor engine is designed in such a way that it can be used hundreds of time without much maintenance and also uses a propellant which can be produced on Mars with the available resources there. Initially during its development, the engineers at SpaceX considered using liquid hydrogen as a fuel but after looking at the various factors, the best option considering the available resources on Mars was actually methane and liquid oxygen. As a result, the SpaceX Raptor uses cryogenic methane and liquid oxygen as its fuel. This subcooled propellant with increased density allows more propellant to be stored in a given volume and also improves the efficiency of the engine. One interesting point to be noted here is that the Raptor is the first methane powered rocket engine to ever take flight. If you want to know more about how SpaceX will produce fuel on Mars, do watch the very first video of the channel where I have discussed about the chemistry of producing rocket fuel on Mars and also about how we will actually mine the resources on Mars. Coming back to the Raptor engine, the Raptor engine has a chamber pressure of 300 bars and provides a thrust of 2200 kN. However, during the ground test in August 2020, SpaceX achieved a chamber pressure of 330 bars. The specific impulse that is the change in momentum that the rocket engine provides per unit of fuel consumed for Raptor is 330 seconds at sea level and 380 seconds in vacuum. ISP or the specific impulse is essentially the efficiency of the rocket engine. For instance, the ISP or the specific impulse of RS-25 which powered the space shuttle is 336 at sea level and 452 in vacuum. During its initial days, development of Raptor was done completely by the private funding provided by SpaceX. However, they did get a funding of 33.6 million US dollars from the US Air Force for Raptor development in Jan 2016. As we previously saw with the Russian RD-180 closed cycle engine, Raptor also has oxygen rich pre-burner. So SpaceX developed their own SX-500 Inconel super alloy that can withstand the very corrosive environment of the oxygen rich cycle of the Raptor engine. This alloy is used to build the chamber and the turbine blades so they can last longer, thus improving the reusability of the engine. Along with this, they also 3D printed many of the critical parts of the engine. The advantage of 3D printing is that the design changes can be implemented very quickly and easily. The Starship and the Super Heavy are estimated to have a combined propellant mass of 4800 tons with 78% oxygen and 22% methane. The Raptor which powers this next generation rocket is surely the most important part of the rocket, as the Starship creates more and more history. Without Raptor, none of this can be possible. So here it is, we just saw how the SpaceX Raptor functions and what makes it so special. Do let me know your views on this video in the comments down below. If you like the video, do consider subscribing the channel for more such content. Thanks for watching, have a nice day.